out of the land on the westbound trail and get the zoomer to stop. It's nice out in here. It's a really nice trail, I think. I'm hearing a little shelter thing on the westbound part of the bike trail going into South Charleston. Uh, and actually, I'm not, not I'm not very far. I mean, I just just outside city limits of my hometown, so nowhere nowhere near South Charleston just yet. But I don't really think I'm going there today. It's already it's already 7:52. So today we're going to be looking at Psalm 119 and the letter Nun. So Nun is the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and the number 14 in Hebrew means double measure of spiritual perfection, kind of like 7 is um, rest or in spiritual perfection, because 14 is 7 multiplied, and Nun has the numeric value of 50. So once it gets past the tenth letter in the Hebrew alphabet, it goes it goes on by tens. I didn't know that before, so I got some letters to clear up. But I'm gonna make a separate video when all the letters are finished to um, go go into more detail about the Hebrew alphabet and uh, also clear up some things that I may have missed in uh, previous videos. So that's that's gonna be a video correcting all those is gonna be a video of itself, but. Nun is the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and as has been stated, it implies double measure of spiritual perfection, but it has the numeric value of 50. So, 50 symbolizes power, celebration, and joy. The letter Nun, each letter also being a number, each number having a meaning that we talked that we just talked about, and each letter also being a picture of something. The pictograph of Nun looks something like a seed, according to Hebrew for Christians. And all the sources I use in these videos is a uh, Hebrew for Christians and uh, cross-examined to find out the meaning of numbers. So, without further delay, let's begin. First, we're going to be looking at this through the NIV. And um, this is going to start in uh, verse 105 of Psalm 119. So, the letter Nun. Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth. And teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. So Psalm 119, again verse number 105, the letter Nun. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. I have sworn, and I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Except I beseech thee the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do not I forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. 
I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. And that was the KJV. I had to skedaddle in the middle of reading the New King James. I'm gonna redo that here and probably take out the chunk where the wasp attacked me. I tried to battle it, but that, that, that just wasn't happening. It sent a clear message it wanted me out of there, so I got out of there, so I guess we're just gonna have to do the rest of the video here. <laughs> I might I might include that as a bonus footage at the end of this video. <laughs> okay. Psalm 119. Again, beginning at verse 105. It's the letter Nun. And this is the New King James. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, I pray, the freewill offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. Every little movement has me on edge now. <laughs> okay, anyway. Be looking at this psalm now from the Hebrew interlinear. So, so for the next eight verses, they're all going to start with the letter Nun. The letter Nun might occur more than once in a verse, but it's always going to start in the verse. A lamp to my feet your word is, and a light to my path. So, the start of verse 105, the letter Nun occurs in the word, in the two words, a lamp. And it's one word in Hebrew, Nur. So where nur, it means candle, lamp, or light. And so, again, the number, the, the letters, I need to double check my facts here real quick. So the letter 50, if I can get on the right setting. The letter 50 symbolizes power, celebration, and joy. And the number 14, double measure of spiritual perfection. So, the light from the candle that is uh, Christ, because Christ being the light of the world. So, he, his word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. He is the light of the world. But when we have light, it's comfort and it brings joy that letter 50 symbolizes. And it's during this joy that we experience um, God's com double perfection. I mean, it's God is the most perfect thing ever. It's as perfect as perfect can get. And the letter Nun occurs again in the in the three words, to my path. And this is one word in Hebrew, lintai batai. And it means pathway, travel, traveler, or way. And the, the light that unto our feet, that is the word of God, it guides us onto the path to complete perfection, to to God's double perfection that he has in store for us. And we receive that gift because of the sacrifice that Christ made for us on the cross. We won't reach that level of perfection on this side of heaven, but our place in heaven and that perfection that we will receive, it is secure because of what Christ did for us. And all we have to do is accept this free lighted path that Christ has paved for us on the cross. In verse 106, I have sworn that I will confirm, 
I will keep your judgments righteous. So this word I have sworn, these three words I have sworn, my bad, is one word in Hebrew, nispatai, and it means adjure, charge, by an oath or with an oath, feed to the full, by mistake for, take an oath, straightly, or cause to, make to swear. This is the only occurrence of the letter nun in this sentence. So, when we swear to do something, and we, we take an oath to do it, there, there's power in that. And the only power we have to do, to go through with it, it's never in our own power. It's always in the power of Christ. Because in and of ourselves, we have no power to do the things we swear. That's why the Bible tells us to just let our ye, our yea be yea and our nay be nay. In other words, let our yes be yes and our no be no. But when we do swear, we have to rely on God's absolute power that the letter nun symbolizes. Because the letter nun being a seed, that is um, how God's power works. It's a seed that gets planted in us when we accept the gospel. And then, and then as we grow in our spiritual maturity, that seed begins to sprout, and we begin to experience God more closely in His absolute perfect power. And it's through this power that we, that that we, that when we swear, that we do confirm and keep God's judgments righteous. And when we, when we invite Christ into our life, and then let Him turn us from our path of sin. We do keep his judgments, his righteous judgments, but it's always through his power that we do these things because we don't have the power in our own selves. Now verse 107, I am afflicted very much, Lord revive me according to your word. Now the letter Nun, it occurs twice in this verse, uh, at, at once at the beginning in the three words, I am afflicted, which is Na'anetai, na and it means a base self, affliction self, answer by, mistake for, chasten self, deal hardly with, defile, exercise, force, gentleness, humble self, hurt, ravish, sing, by mistake for, speak, by mistake for, submit self, weaken in any wise. And the second time the letter nun occurs is in the two words, revive me, which is hayenai in Hebrew. And it means keep, leave, make, alive, certainly give, promise life, let suffer to, live, nourish up, preserve, alive, quicken, recover, repair, restore to life, revive, God, save alive, life, lives, I mean lives, Surely be whole. So, this I am afflicted, when we read the translation, there's a lot of examples of self in here. And when we are afflicted, especially when it comes to the ways of the Spirit, it's not always self-inflicted, but a lot of it can be. Because... When we dwell when we dwell on things a lot, or if we allow Satan to remind us of our past or of our sin, if we dwell on that and and we're not keeping our focus on what Christ has done for us instead of and instead focus on, you know, our works again and falling short, and we're always gonna fall short, but if and we do have to be aware of that and we do have to have Christ help us out of it, and we need Christ to keep us out of it. But that's the thing, if we need Christ to keep us out of it, then it's His works that matter and not ours, and we have to rest in that. When we become afflicted, it's not always a self-infliction, but a lot of the times we do things that make this affliction worse on ourselves by allowing ourselves to think that it's even our works that matter to begin with. 
because our works are not perfect. They don't really have any power, but God has the power. And God uses his power to revive us, to, to lift us, to make alive. And when we're revived, we do have celebration in our hearts and joy. And it's this joy that we can feel because it's a gift of Yahweh himself, God. The tetragrammaton here in the Hebrew interlinear, the yod heh vav -Hey. It's God's name in Hebrew, uh, yod heh vav -Hey, the hand of grace nailed in grace, which is Jesus. The when we're when we are revived and given joy because we're revived from our afflictions, whether self-inflicted or not, when when God brings us out of these, it is always a gift of Christ, and it's it's always due to His perfect, doubly perfect, in fact, complete power. And it's all according to His Word because every letter of the Old Testament points to this New Testament covenant that Christ was going to die for us and save us from our sins. Verse 108, The free will offerings of my mouth, except I beseech you, God, and your judgments, teach me. So, the letter Nun occurs uh, again twice in this, in this verse. Oh, actually, three times. The first time in the three words, the free will offerings, and this word is midbowit mid in Hebrew, and it means free will offering, freely, plentiful, voluntarily, offering, willingly, offering. And the three words, I beseech you, is na in Hebrew. And it means, I beseech, pray thee, you, go. Go to, now, and oh. And the third time is in the two words, teach me. This is lamadinai, and it means unaccustomed, diligently. I mean, unaccustomed or accustomed. Diligently, expert, instruct, learn, skillful, teach, teacher, teaching. The free will offerings of my mouth, except I besiege you, God, and your judgments teach me. So, a lot of the times when we give free will offerings to God, it's and it's in the name free will that it's out of our own out of our own joy our own will to do it that we that we want to do it and a lot of these times we also do it in celebration of something or when we have something on our mind um fasting is an example of this but there's more than that there's tithing in church there's us there's there's an, a, a number of things that um can be seen as a free will offering today and and sometimes a lot of our praises can be a free will offering because it says here the free will offerings of my mouth and except I beseech you see our prayers when when, when we pray to God he gives us our he gives us our he gives us his attention and his attention is perfect and when he teaches us his judgments the te his own his teachings are perfect and they're often when we're reading his word that we begin to see these and the free will offerings of our mouth even though they have no power of their own it's again little it's like the hymn Little is much when God is in it. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. See, when we do things in the name of Christ, or when we do things for Christ, it's Christ that makes that takes them and makes it powerful. Because everything we do, it's for when it's for Christ, Christ makes it big. Little is much when he's in it. And when we beseech God, when we ask things of God, especially when it's to, for him to accept, you know, our free will offerings, the things that we do because we desire to please him, 
God will take it and he will grant it because he is perfect and he desires for us to live that perfect life too. Even though we never will on fully, God, God, our, again, our, our position, our, our, our place in heaven and our eventual receiving of the perfection, the, the spiritual body, the oikaterion, the body that will be incapable of sinning, as long as we keep, as long as we keep God's teachings, and as long as we, we keep resting in the finished work of Christ and the perfect power that He gives us, and celebrate that. God will keep us on this path of perfection, but it's always in His power, never outside of, always in. So, verse one hundred nine. My life is in my hand continually, and Your law not do will I forget. So, the letter Nun occurs once in this verse. It's in the words, my life. This is, And this is the word, napsai. And it means any appetite, beast, body, breath, creature, deadly, desire, discontent, fish, ghost, greedy, he, hardy, hath, jeopardy of, life, and jeopardy, Lust, man, be mind, mortally, one. Own, person, pleasure, him, my, thy, self. Them, yourselves, slay, soul, tablet. They, thing, she, will, would have it. So, so my life is in my hand continually, and your law not do will I forget. So we all know who our, who our life is ultimately in the hands of. It's always under the, our life is always in the hands and in the power of God. But because we do have an extent of free will, I mean, I, I personally believe in free will. Uh, my beliefs are also slightly Calvinistic. I, I don't think there's, I mean, there's no way that God doesn't already know who all is going to heaven and who's not. But we do have an extent of free will, and this is demonstrated many times. So, our, not every, our life is always, is always under the power of God. It's always in His hand, but there are things that we can do that affect the world around us. And by extension, it affects our own life, our, our actions. Like, our sins, even though God doesn't punish anybody while they're on earth, there are earthly consequences to our sins. So, our, 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 our life, or our immediate future, can sometimes often depend on our actions, which is in our hands. Which is why we have to trust in God's power, and uh, rely on Him, for, and, rely, and rely on Him to guide us through everything we do. That way, because... His knowledge is is more than doubly perfect because everything about God is more than doubly perfect. He's as perfect as anything gets. And when we choose not to forget His law, it does cause us to stray away from things that might affect us in a negative way. Now, when we follow the law, it's not to maintain our salvation because there's nothing we can do to maintain our salvation, just like we didn't earn it. It's always a gift. It's, it's the gift from Christ but we choose to rest it, to celebrate in it, to have joy in it, to have joy that God himself did the work for us. And our life is in fact in his hand, but there are things that we that we have to choose to do that can either put ourselves on a good path or a bad path, and we have to rest in Christ's judgments and uh, his guidance to get to keep us on the right path when it's when it's time for us to make decisions. So, verse 110, Have laid the wicked a snare for me, and from your precepts not do have I strayed. So again, the letter Nun occurs once in this verse, and it's in the beginning, obviously. So, these two words, have laid, is netenu in Hebrew, and it means add, apply, appoint, ascribe, assign, Avenge, be healed, bestow. 
spring forth hither, cast, cause, charge, come, commit, consider, count, cry, deliver up, direct, distribute, do, doubtless, without fail, fasten, frame, get, give, forth, over, up, grant, hang up, have, indeed, lay unto, charge up, give, leave, lend, let out, lie, lift up, make, owe that, occupy, offer, ordain, pay, perform, uh, place, pour, print, pull, put forth, recompense, render, requite, restore, send out, set forth, shoe, shoot forth, up, sing, slander, strike, submit, suffer, surely, take, thrust, trade, turn, utter, weep, willingly, withdraw, wood, to God, and yield. So have laid the wicked a snare for me, and from your precepts not do I have strayed. So much like <laughs> when nature threw that uh, wasp at me, which think now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure it actually might have been a hornet. But when nature threw that at me, I mean, it made me... It's, it scared me, but I still wanted to make this video. So I just picked a different spot, because sometimes... So, I mean, some because sometimes you gotta just work with life the way God gave it to you, because things, things happen for a reason. Maybe that... Maybe there was a reason why I'm doing it over... Why, a significance as to why that wasp chased me away from here I don't know but <laughs> and not I'm pretty sure that might not be exactly what this verse had in mind but <laughs> it's an interesting example but let's uh, dig into this again have laid the wicked a snare for me and from your precepts not do I have strayed so the enemy Although their power is weak compared to the power of God, or, else, or the wicked, they do lay snares for us. And when we stray from God's precepts, it makes it easier to fall into these snares or for these traps that the enemy sets for us. But when we rest in the power, in the in the power of the doubly perfect power of God. The, the wicked's power is uh, becomes non-existent because the power of God becomes our own. Not that I mean it's still completely God's, but when he's on our side, the enemy has no power at all. Howdy. And when we rest, that God's power is on our side. The the enemy's traps have no effect on us. And this is when we choose not to stray from the lighted path that that Christ that Christ is the the seed that keeps growing in us as we mature spiritually. And as long as we continue along that path of God's precepts, when we 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 are credited as not straying from because Christ kept them fully, and when we keep Christ on our hearts, we are a lot less likely to fall into these snares of the wicked. So verse 111, and ultimate Mordecai talks about this number a lot. The It's kind of like the, of course the Trinity is much better than this, but we're much pow more powerful than this. It, it, also, it does help explain how something can be one, but also it can be three in one. See, the number 111, it's three ones, but it's one number. Just like the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they look like three, but they're one. Just like the number 111, it looks like three different ones, but if you look at it, it's actually one number. Ultimate Mordecai preaches on this a lot, and I might make that in a separate video of my own. But, for now, 
sticking to the letter nun. So, I have inherited your testimonies forever, for the joy of my heart they are. So, again, the letter nun only occurs once in this verse, and it's in the obviously in the beginning. Uh, the three words, I have inherited, nahaltai, and it means divide, have inheritance, take as a heritage, cause to give, to make to, inherit, distribute, for divide, for and holy, I mean, for and by, not the word holy ain't in there, give for, have leave for, take for inheritance, have in, cause to be made to possess possession so i have inherited your testimonies forever for the joy of my heart they are so the joy of our heart is the joy in christ that we receive that the letter nun represents and what what testimonies exactly have we inherited we've inherited christ's testimonies god's testimonies the testimony of him dying on the cross, taking the punishment for our sins that we deserve, and that if we rest in it, if we rest in this finished work, in the double complete, the double perfection, completeness that God credits us with, because we are credited with the obedience of Christ, and that's as perfect as it gets when we rest in his finished work, and that's how we are saved, because we are credited with Christ's obedience, not because we did obey, but because we received it. Just like he, Ephesians says, he who knew no sin became our sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Not, And he didn't receive our sin by doing sin, he just received it. Just like we weren't made righteous for doing righteousness, but we received it into ourselves by trusting in his double, his double perfect obedience, the double perfection that is God. God is the definition, the very definition of perfection. And... When we rest in Christ and we begin to act apart, we know we are saved. And we are we know we are saved because Christ's perfection is perfection. There's nothing we can do to add or take away from it. And this does become the joy of our heart because we know that we will get to spend an eternity with the God who created us and loves us. And finally, verse 112. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes always to the very end. So, the letter nun occurs only once in this verse. I have inclined. Natetai in Hebrew is what these three words are. And it means afternoon, apply, bow, down, ing, carry, aside, decline, deliver, extend, go down, be gone, incline, intend, lay down, offer, Outstretched, overthrown, pervert, pitch, prolong, put away, shoe, spread out, stretch, forth, out, take aside, turn aside, away, rest, content, cause to yield. So, I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes always to the very end. And this is the same as when we place our trust in the perfection, the double perfection that, that Nun that the number 50 represents in the letter Nun, when we place our trust in Christ and rest in the in his finished work that he credits us with, not because we did it, but because we rest in it and received it in ourselves. We have inclined our heart to perform God's statutes, and his statutes are believing. And when we believe, we are credited with the whole thing, not because we did it, but because Christ did it and he took our punishment be because we didn't, because we couldn't do it, and he took our punishment for us, and therefore we were credited with his obedience. And we are credited as keeping these statutes that he kept to the very end. And when we, be and when we pl place our trust and stop listening to the enemy that it's impossible, when we finally accept that it is possible and we rest in it, in, in what Christ offers us, the gospel, the good news, we begin to act the part. And through God's power and through his uh, double divine completeness that he gives us, and again, he is the very definition of, and it's all, everything we do here 
as Christians, it's always in his power, never in our own. In our own, we always fail. And the enemy loves to remind us of this. But when we choose to rest in, in God's power instead of our own, our stack, his statutes we do end up keeping to the very end. And the enemy is already lost. And he, the enemy doesn't understand grace. If, he, if the enemy understood what the cross was really about, he would have tried to stop it. Instead, Satan tr did what he could to make the cross happen and ended up playing himself right into God's hands. You see, God is able to use the bad, the bad things for good. And we can be redeemed because it was ultimately man that made the choice to bring sin into the world by listening to Satan's temptations, but because Satan rebelled against God first, he can't be redeemed because he was a divine being. He should have known better. But there's no condemnation for us if we are in Christ. And all you have to do to receive this gift is to repent. What does repent mean? It means to change your mind about God, deciding that he does exist, or changing your mind about your own righteousness, realizing that you have none, and then placing your trust and resting in his righteousness, what he credits you with. And this is perfect, like the, perf like the double perfection nun represents, or the seed it represents. The seed, that, the seed of perfection that Christ will plant in you and will continue to sprout as long as you rest in it. And when you rest in it, you are credited as uh, never straying from God's statutes like Christ. Not because you did it, but because you received it. Just like he received your sin into himself. Not by doing sin, but he received it into himself and he buried it with him when he did when he died, and because you were justified, he rose again on the third day. And this is God's testimonies that we keep in our heart. And when we rest in it, we are credited with this perfect, with this doubly perfect obedience. But it's not in our own power, it's always in his. Anyways, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this adventure. I have, and uh, it's a little late now. <laughs> it got really dark really fast. But anyways, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next one, if God be willing. God bless you all. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes. Ooh. Ooh, wasp landed on my arm. Ooh. Oh, man. Okay, I got the message. <laughs> Getting out. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs>